Go ahead and get your notebook out. We're going to start with the Neolithic Revolution. And you're going to need a sheet of paper to answer the short answer questions. Title both the Neolithic Revolution. And the main idea here is that farming is going to change, dramatically change, the way we lived. We're going to begin to live in small communities. We're going to begin to gather. And as we begin to grow in these small communities, this laid the seeds for what we now call civilization. our early species, the primate, began to figure some things out. Back at the old stone age, um, here are their best achievements. They made stone <clears throat> stone chopping tools, um, came up with different kinds of new weapons, right? um, even fashioned what you would now call a cup. Okay, but for the most part, they still lived a nomadic life, following their animals around, wandering from place to place living in small, tight communities. And it was about 1,600 years ago, uh, I'm saying 1,600, 16, uh, about a million years ago, when man began to move out of this area here in Africa and began to move into Europe, uh, different parts of Asia, and even cross the Straits into North and South America. But it all changed dramatically with one idea. And this idea took the form of two shapes. One, man began to domesticate animals, make animals work for man. And the second began to domesticate plants, that is agriculture. Make plants grow when we wanted them to grow, how many we wanted to grow. This changed everything. And from now, <clears throat> from that point forward, man began to live in one place. And this laid the seeds to what we now call civilization. At some point, people started growing their own food. Unable to maintain a mobile way of life, they would have stayed close to any source of water they could find and planted new fields of wheat and barley around them. Rather than just following food sources around different locations, 
for the first time, what people start to do is that they bring these resources back to them. Not just as harvested food, but they're bringing them as seeds. And they're growing them next to their village. And that's the first time, really, this is the first time we see this anywhere in the world. The Stone Age people of the Middle East were becoming farmers, the first farmers in the world. There are only a few parts of the ancient world that developed farming independently. Not long after the Middle East came China, where people grew another high-yield cereal grass, rice. Pockets of farming also emerged in the Americas, based on corn, squash, and beans. Later in Africa, people farmed sorghum, millet, and yams. And in most places where farming emerged, a relatively large, advanced civilization followed. Now I want you to answer these few questions that I have for you here. Um, key thing is I want you to answer in complete sentences. All right, number one, two, three, and four. You not you do not have to write the question, but answer in complete sentences. The Neolithic Revolution. All right, again, this is just a recap. Um, we began as hunters and gatherers. And slowly, man began to make changes. And the real change is going to happen around somewhere between 10 to 6,000 um, BCE. And this change dramatically sped up changes that were about to happen. And it led to food surpluses because with extra food now we can feed larger populations communities can become cities and cities can become civilizations now there are five key things that you need when you look at a civilization okay number one you got to have large cities and the reason that you want to have large cities is because this is where everyone is going to meet, right here in the downtown area, all right, or if you will, downtown, just like we have to these days. And what happens downtown? This is where merchants come, farmers come. Everyone um, comes to this place that, to sell, to buy new things, and this changes man. But large cities aren't enough. You also have to have specialized workers. Specialized workers are going to be key to maintaining the city. You're going to need cement. Um, <clears throat> you're going to need someone to be the bricklayers. You're going to need someone to be the um, uh, the blacksmith. Someone to fashion weapons. Someone to be the um, the governor. Someone to make decisions. Okay, and because you need someone to make decisions, that's going to lead to the what we call the development of government. Okay? Um, and also the development of religious institutions. Um, and then, because we're trading with people from distant lands, we began to try to write down what those um, dealings were. And this led to record keeping. All right? And record keeping led to the very first form of writing. And of course, specialized workers, as they become better at their jobs, they're going to invent better and better tools. And this is going to lead to something we call advanced technology. All of these five um, characteristics together will make what we now call civilization. Now, um, <clears throat> looking at the impact of the Neolithic Revolution, okay, and that is when I say the impact, I'm talking about slash and burn farming where we are going to um, literally burn the ground and then we're going to plant there the next year because the soil is going to be rich in nutrients, all right? Combine that with 
enclosed animals who have been tamed and are used to being um, kept for our purposes, this is going to lead to a dramatic increase in food supply. Now, if you just look at this, um, there are a list of economic and social changes um, that occurred over time. Of course, trade, specialized workers, social classes. Social classes is going to be a big one. Social classes, um, people are going to begin to break off into different areas, and we're going to value some areas over others. Okay, and this is going to um, determine where you wound up in society. Okay, now of course the government system of writing we just talked about. Alright, what I want you to do now is read this short um, piece that I have here and answer these couple of questions. Again, answer in complete sentences. Now, all of this together, alright, uh, for the most part takes place in what we call the River Valley Civilizations. Right, in Egypt, we're talking about the Nile, um, Mesopotamia, we're talking about the Tigris and the Euphrates, um, then India, we're talking about the Indus Valley. And one of the reasons um, that all of these take place near rivers is because rivers provide the fertile soil that you need for farming. And the greatest of these will probably be China. And we will talk about this in depth as we are um, get ready this week. Um, civilization. Again, I want you to read this little slight piece on the, one of the first cities called Ur. And respond to number seven. Bring this to class tomorrow. And we will discuss the first civilization.